G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to be flying the English Electric Leutnant. Have I got a license for it? Nah. Do I care? Nah. This thing is absolutely amazing. But before we talk about this pl uh, plane in particular, I just wanted to sort of raise a few questions and sort of uh, a couple of ideas, throw them out at you before we actually begin with the gameplay itself. So uh, I was thinking of uh, purchasing a 4K 144Hz monitor. It's uh, pretty much come out a month ago, the M28U. It's a 4K 144Hz monitor. It is about 800, 900 uh, Australian dollars and um, I could probably do it. Uh, probably couldn't run 4K 144 with War Thunder, um, but I could probably do like somewhere in between or you know maybe turn down the graphics settings just to get some nice higher resolution gameplay. Uh, alternatively, I could probably just run the game at 1080p 144 until I find a better graphics card. Um, I, I could probably do that. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Um, is it even worth 4K 144? Um, maybe in the future when scaling is a lot better, but overall I still think I would like to improve the resolution of video quality just for you guys, just so that you guys can have uh, maybe something a bit nicer to watch on your big 4K TVs. Even though most of you watch in like 720p, uh, it will also help with the compression, so those lower resolutions on YouTube will look a lot nicer. Anyway, if you would like to support that endeavor, of course you can support me via Air Models or via Merch. Alternatively, you can send donations through PayPal if you really want to. Of course, absolutely not mandatory. Just by watching the videos, you support the channel nonetheless. Anyway, on to the Lightning. This plane is probably one of my favorites. I would rank it quite highly among my uh, favorite jets, and uh, the Lightning is one of those because it is just so damn powerful. When uh, described by British pilots as saddled to a skyrocket, you might think, wow, this thing is incredibly powerful, but it is and it isn't at the same time. You might think, well, if it's so powerful, then surely it must be amazing and uh, super easy to play. Well, no, it is actually extremely difficult to play, but that's where the charm of this plane comes in. It is one of those planes that you have to take the time, the effort, and the uh, knowledge to sort of master. And once you do get the hang of this plane, it's insane, practically insane. This plane is extremely strong. Uh, it has a really, really good climb rate. The missiles are decent, and you've got two of them. It's got a good radar. It has good uh, guns. It has those Aidens, of course. And with the red tops, you can do things like bully Yak 38s. At this tier, you'll find a lot of the hover sausages, like the Yak 38 and the uh, Harrier. So if you can deal with them, then you pretty much have it made, because once the Yak-38s are done, there are no really threatening missiles. You have, sure, the MiG-21MF and the SMT at 10.3, which is a little bit ridiculous, but if you can get rid of uh, basically anything with an R-60, or alternatively just the hover sausages, then you're pretty much good, because you can deal with the MiG-21s fairly reasonably, especially considering that you can, uh, I believe you can outclimb them, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I haven't played that many matches against the uh, MiG-21 MF and the SMT in this thing, um, but I tell you what, everything else you are pretty much good against, and you have plenty of speed, and you also have plenty of uh, first turn, so if you are going to go for those one circle dogfights, you can quite often slip on into the uh, inside of one of those planes. So, AV-8 is uh, coming in nice and slow. The key is with the guns here to go after slow targets. Aidens have very, very, uh, well, I would consider them to be low velocity cannons compared to the likes of, say, the Vulcan, for example, or the uh, American 20s, where they just seem to be really easy to aim. The uh, Aidens are not quite the same, especially at those higher speeds where you're fighting those supersonics. So I would be very careful when you are dealing with uh, faster targets. I would try and get them lower and uh, slower. That would be ideal. Your, your biggest threat are. Uh, Pretty much going to be MiG 19s in a dogfight with your guns. So, what I would recommend go for your guns for uh, go for your missiles first on the slower or the uh, juicier targets like the Yak 38 Hover Sausage Boy, uh, any MiG 19s or anything at super high altitude that is not really reachable with guns, and then go for those sort of dogfights on the lower altitude targets. And that's kind of what I've done here in this battle. There's a MiG 19, and the MiG 19 has sort of played his cards quite wrong. Uh, what I would do is I would continue these vertical dogfights, but I wouldn't be uh, turning, I wouldn't be using much roll, I would be really just trying to get me as a uh, English Electric Lightning to just burn all my energy in turns, but it's not really working out for this MiG-19, and a little bit of spray is uh, proving to be not the play here. 
I'm, I'm trying to get my guns on target, and as you can see, because the guns are so low, and because the guns are so far back, they do require a bit of extra leading, and it does make the difference. It is not very easy, but I do get a lucky crit there with the last of the ammunition, and um, boom, easy four kills. This plane in the right hands, you can just do extremely well. It's one of those planes where you need to take time to figure out its quirks, figure out its uh, little little interesting bits about it. And then once you do that, once you're used to it, it is a, bl a blast. It is honestly a blast to play. It's kind of like the F-8U, uh, where if you can get past the wing rips, it's actually a pretty good uh, plane. The thing to get past here is the way that the plane behaves. It's a little bit fat. You can see it's got a bit of a beer gut. It's uh, been drinking too much. Um, what, what, what beer do Brits drink? I have no idea. But um, if there's a beer that you guys drink, you, uh, you Brits in the comment section below, let me know. And um, well, whatever it is, the English Electric Lightning is drinking way too much of it. You can see it's got a little beer belly. And um, that basically is... Uh, it, it doesn't make the plane slow on its own. There would be other things there, but it certainly does give it the impression that uh, that is the thing that makes it big, fat, and slow. But PFM there, not much of a threat with the red tops. The red tops have a range of about two and a half kilometers. Uh, I wouldn't really use them past two and a half, especially if the enemy is traveling uh, uh, away from you. If they're traveling traveling laterally, that is uh, from your right hand side of screen to left or left to right, then sure, you can go 2.5 very, very easily. But if they're traveling away, I'd probably go 1.8 to 1.5, um, just because this plane is, uh, sorry, the, the missiles are not that uh, enduring. This thing with AIM-9Gs or like AIM-9Ls or AIM-9Js would be ridiculous. I think it, it's such a missed opportunity for the uh, for the Brits to not go with a missile that's like actually really, really good. Uh, not to say that the red tops are not good at all, but certainly there is something left to be desired and that thing is range. These things do not have the range, but they do have the killing power, which is quite nice. So. The situation on the ground, or at least at lower altitude, is looking pretty dire. I can see the Harrier there, uh, and the Hover Sausage is... Uh, the, the battle is, is heating up a little bit with an R60 heading towards that uh, AV-8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach him, try and get my myself like nicely lined up, and I get a nice little critical hit, which is enough to put him into a situation where he's not going to survive the next run. Uh, a friendly Harrier decides that he wants to come out and uh, yoink the kill off me, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to take it. I'm going to run with it there's bigger fish to fry and it's really not worth getting uh, a little bit upset about it right now you might as well go on and see if you can get some more kills and that's exactly what we're going to do we're just going to sort of put that behind us and, and move on so i'm looking sort of forward and uh, you'll notice that there's an su7 av8 and a mig-15 now the mig-15 shouldn't be in here because it's 8.3 even though 8.7 is probably more suitable for the mig-15 um, it is not supposed to be in this matchmaker at this current time so I'm trying to look for a target that I can easily red top, uh, one that's more of a threat. Uh, and at this point, I'm thinking that maybe the plane that is the best at turning, that being the MiG-15, is actually the bigger threat here, simply because I don't trust my teammates to not turn fight with it. So red top it is, and straight into the MiG-15, the red top goes. So AV-8A is going to uh, go for some shots, and maybe is going to pitch up. So I'm just going to keep my speed, and uh, of course, being a lightning with afterburners, uh, being the only plane in this sort of dogfight, apart from the SU-7 with afterburners, I don't think the SU-7 is really participating in the dogfight, so we could potentially count it out of that. Uh, it is kind of a situation where I need to be wary of what I've got. I've got a whole heap of AV-8s nearby, and uh, this AV-8, as well as the first AV-8, is... Uh, well, they're, they're sort of looking pretty, pretty juicily at, at my booty. Uh, so are the surface-to-air missiles guarding the airfield, so... Knowing my team, what are they going to do? Are they going to steer away from those very, very deadly AAA? Or are they just going to go balls in and, uh, you know, not pull out? Well, you can only guess what's going to happen. So, I'm going to try at least to salvage this. This is looking pretty damn bad, and I just need to get one or two kills here to thin the numbers out as much as I can. So the AV-8 is the target that I decide to go for. Why? Because he's at the back of the pack and he is the slowest. So the AV-8 ducks underneath my guns, which is a very smart move. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start turning and burning. I'm going to start burning that speed and that will allow me to slot onto the AV-8-6 because I am at low speed, better at turning than the AV-8. I'm going to go into the vertical because I know, one, that's where I'm going to burn all my speed and two, that is where I'm going to be able to uh, sort of sit 
on the uh, on the tail of the AV8. But then I decide to go for the SU7 just because he is chasing after my friendly there, and uh, that leaves me in a little bit of a precarious situation there with the AV8. Now. At the lower speeds that I'm at right now, the lightning is really, really bad at maneuvering. So I'm just going to quickly squeeze off some uh, shots in head-on and then turn around, barely missing the AV8, barely missing the ground. And then that is the cue for me to get the hell out of there. Get some speed, get some altitude. You never know when the hover sausage and friends are going to come back. And of course, uh, that dogfight goes on for a little bit longer. But we're pretty much out of ammo, pretty much out of everything. And it's just sort of a matter to go back to base. Now, on the radar, I did spot something, and it does look like a Yak-38, so I am going to get ready to launch a missile, and this weird kind of thing happens where I should be able to track him, but by the time I get the missile off, and by the time, you know, with ping and everything, uh, it, 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 I don't want to talk about it. it. It was horrific. It makes me very, very upset. Um, it, it kills me inside. No, not really, but uh, it isn't really nice to see. You, you, you don't like to see it, but... Uh, I'm not really sure where the hover sausage there decided to dip out of view, uh, out of the spotting system. But uh, for those of you that are wondering why I dislike the spotting system in War Thunder so much, well, that's exactly the reason why. So, we're playing a bit of an energy dogfight here against the Yak-38. I'm turning around to make sure there are no enemies around me. I'm keeping my head on a swivel as much as possible. And now I have the Yak-38 energy trapped, which is a perfect candidate here for the second red top. Simply because I want to get rid of him as soon as possible, keep my speed up, and I don't want to sit in a dogfight with him. That's kill number four, so pretty impressive show there by myself, and uh, I'm very, very satisfied with that. So, moving on, we have the SU-7, who is also looking juicy, not really paying attention to me. Uh, and it kind of would have been good to have a red top for the SU-7, but honestly, at these types of speeds, it's very unlikely that the uh, SU-7, obviously paying attention by now, is going to really fall for a red top. Quick head on here with the AV-8A, going underneath once again, and of course going straight into the vertical, hoping that the AV-8 follows. Uh, he doesn't really follow, he's kind of looking at that Harrier, and the Harrier dispatches quickly of the SM, uh, SU-7 BMK. BMKs tend to be flown by quite inexperienced pilots. It's not a plane that I would recommend new players fly. It is really, really tough to master. So uh, I would recommend that you guys, if you are looking for a plane to grind the Russian tech tree, just don't pick the SU-7. It is uh, maybe for ground RB if you're looking for something to go along with your terms T, but don't take it into air RB. It's really, really not worth it. Speaking of not worth it, uh, that shot was totally worth it because now I have just wingtipped this AV-8 and he's pouring out what looks like oil or fuel um, and I'm desperately trying to get my shots on. I thought, oh yeah, here we go, here he goes. He's going to donk himself into the ground, uh, but no, he decides that he wants to go for an AI instead, um, which is actually not a bad move because he's pretty much screwed. He's pretty much about to lose that fight and he thought, maybe I'll just take someone out as a contingency. Bit of extra SL, bit of extra grind. Not a bad move actually by the AV-8, but he's pretty much stuffed here. There's not a whole lot he can do. He can't quite out-energy me. He can't outrun me. He can't really do much. Now, have a look at this missile. I thought it was going to go for me originally, uh, but it actually targets the Harrier Jar 1, so that's a pretty valuable team member lost. However, I am managing to keep my speed away from this uh, AV-8, and the uh, original AV-8 gets taken out by a friendly, so that's very good news for me. It just leaves me here with the AV-8 in front of me. I'm going to turn my afterburner off and go for a little bit more of a hit. This puts the AV-8 in a little bit of a precarious situation, and he hits the top of the hill for the ace. And I almost hit the AV-8 for the death, which was have been extremely embarrassing. But you know what? Things in the lightning are really, really nice when you have such a successful situation happen. The lightning is one of those planes, like I said, that you just have to get the hang of. It's not a bad plane at all. It may have some issues maybe when you stock, uh, but overall this plane is more than fantastic to fly. It is a great privilege to fly, and it is just one of those iconic fighters that everyone should really, really love. So ladies and gents, that is the English Electric Lightning. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Are you an English Electric Lightning enjoyer like me? Or are you one of those Harrier or Hover Sausage fanboys? Very disappointing if you are. You have to join the English Electric Lightning gang. Grab yourself one of those planes. It is ah, so good. You just have to get used to it. You just have to do that sort of thing. And that's kind of what happens at this tier. You aren't able to just sort of go in, get kills. You have to sort of play things quite strategically and be quite careful. And of course, that's all thrown away when you get to top tier where it's like more positional, more looking for targets that you can throw a missile at rather than individual dogfighting and managing your speed type things. So 
it is a really, really nice sort of change, if you will, from those higher tier dog fights. And I do like this tier. This tier happens to be sort of one of my favorites. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. Let me know in the comments section below if you did. And of course, if you would like to support the channel, you are more than welcome to through uh, merch, through Patreon, uh, through Air Models, of course. Uh, anything in that sort of uh, description box below, more than welcome to. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, no, I'm not using Facebook, screw that. Uh, but any of the social media platforms, I think I have a link tree in the description below. You can see all of those right there. So ladies and gentlemen, I am currently on like day six, going on to day seven out of 10 in a row at work. Uh, I'm tired as, I'm really, really tired, but uh, I haven't been able to get much content for you. I haven't been able to play much War Thunder lately, but I do have five days off and you might just see a live stream in the meantime. We'll see how things go. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, take care and I'll catch you next time.